Hey, what's going on, everyone? Welcome to another episode of the Great Black Speakers Podcast, where we connect through conversation. I am your host, Lawrence Watkins. I am the founder and CEO of Great Black Speakers Bureau. I'm also the president and chief operating officer of the Black Business School. And today we have a very special guest. We're connecting you with Miss Shana Atkins. And Shana is the founder and digital transformation coach at Atco. And Atco is a company that helps corporations act like startups by using agile and design thinking. Today, we're talking about how Shana used corporate strategies to quit her job and actually start this new venture and grow her startup. So Shana, how are you doing today? I'm doing wonderful. It's so good to talk to you, Lawrence. Yeah, I am excited about this. Uh, you know, my background is actually in engineering, so my, I have a double E degree. Oh, yes. Um, yeah, yeah. So I'm always happy to talk with you know product managers and people in that in, in that type of space and yeah. uh, looking to learn more. Uh, so you know, for the audience who don't don't know know much about you, can you tell them about what you currently do and how you've gotten to this point in your career? Yeah. So um, my official title to you know most of my clients is a digital transformation coach. So essentially, what I do is I go into organizations and I teach them the how behind how. Um, large, high growth startups grow very fast and how they build their products and software to do so. And so, um, yeah, that's what I currently do. I'm also a founder. So I, um, it, the CEO of Adco, we have a team of eight and um, yeah, we, that's, that's what I do every day is help usually traditional large corporations um, think and operate a little bit differently because that's what we need right now. All right. And don't mind the chat, please. Uh, that's just me taking notes to myself um, as we're having this conversation. Uh, yeah. So can you uh, tell the audience a little bit about, I guess, your history in terms of how you got to this point in your career in terms of having your own startup? Yeah. So it's interesting because I'm, I'm going to take it way back for a second here. <laughs> but I'm a product of entrepreneurs. Both my mother and my father were entrepreneurs. So I actually grew up, I'm from Chicago, grew up on North Avenue in Latrobe on the west side in a storefront. Um, my mom actually ran a beeper company in the 90s and then pivoted, did cell phones. So it's like before there was like a Sprint store, you would have these retailers kind of selling um, products. So I, I was always in businesses. And then my father owned a document discovery printing company and he actually grew that to a, a decent size. And, you know, had he actually had an office right across from Willis Tower, Sears Tower, as Chicagoans know it. And um, so I've just always been business, right? And like, I think business is family. And that's just like how I operate on the day to day basis. So that was the first kind of big thing for me. Um, the second one is that I went to, you know, I guess, STEM caught on to me because I used to activate pagers and beepers as a child, but <laughs> from there went to Spelman, majored in physics. And so I've always been in a, a high experimental type of mindset, right? Like, how can I experiment? How can I uh, try this, tweak that, and then go from there? And, um, and then I think the third kind of major thing that from my background or history that's relevant is um, in my senior year of college, I actually had a mental break, probably because of all the physics and then just the drama of trying to be cute in college. But um, that <laughs> that particular instance where I literally was to the point where I couldn't do anything, right? And I had to kind of rebuild. I've dropped out of school. I had to rebuild. I had to, you know, go out, go back after my scholarship because, you know, if, if you don't do well in school, like there's repercussions for that, right? So <laughs> I, had, I had to go like build my life over from the ground up and then try to enter into corporate America. And so somewhere between those kind of three major themes in my life, I found something called agile, which essentially is the combination of entrepreneurial thinking, experimentation, and like building something incrementally from nothing. So that was just like, it was just aligned with how I wanted to operate my life. And from there, I did it in the company. I was I'm, uh, kind of the product of a large consulting firm. And I noticed that there was like no flavor um, in the industry. And then I also noticed that 
there was no intersection of that with like design and like other concepts, other corporate strategies that are important for scale and good customer experience and that sort of thing. So I started Echo. I was like, yeah, I, I, um, I want to marry these things. I want to put a little trap jazz on it. And I want to have a, a company that has a lot of fun helping, com helping traditional companies think a little differently. Sorry. Yeah. You got my brain rolling over here. I cannot wait to this conversation. All right. <laughs> like, you know, I have to get a little personal, a little professional. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, it's all good. It's all good. So I want to start back at the beginning though, in terms of how was it or yeah. How was it growing up in an entrepreneurial family with you know, two entrepreneurs as parents, especially Ooh. as it relates to, you know, the, the, the path you decided to go down yourself. Yeah, so it's funny because both of my parents were disrupted by like the dot com bubble, right? Like when the internet got hot, like, you know, Sprint stores start popping up, there's no need for resellers anymore, right? So, like, both my parents' businesses closed when I was a teenager. And I think that when you're a teenager and you're like, you go from having like a decent life to like, oh, like, finances change real fast, right? So I think for me, I was like, I need me a good job. I need to get this scholarship. Like, I'm not about this life. Um, I do think, though, that I am the type of person, because I grew up in that environment, like, I had always had a business, or I always was willing to go out and sell something or like I just I'm, I'm just really like I'm willing to embrace the risk because I feel like on the other end of it is always like community and family like you know what I'm saying like all my aunts and uncles now today really were just my mom and dad's customers or their business partners or mm -hmm. their whatever and then we also grew up in a very pro-black um, family. So it was all about just being conscious and just how do you get back to the community and what is, you know, I, I realized the, the role of commerce in, in black community and, and growth. And so I think that it just like, I had one, I had a lot of confidence. Like I really literally think I can do anything in the world, which I, I'm really grateful to my father specifically for that. And then two, like, I, I've been to the, I've seen it from the bottom to the top. Like I know exactly what I'm in and like what it takes to grow that and kind of what sacrifices and risks come with that. So I just have a lot of like, I'm just a little bit fearless because I know what I'm getting into. So I don't know. Does that answer your question? Yeah, no, that does answer my question. But that makes me ask another question in regards to you going into corporate, right? So you went into corporate because you saw the, you know, the, the serious lows that can happen when a business gets disrupted uh, yeah. in entrepreneurship and that made you decide to go into corporate. But what made you decide to come back the other way around and start your own business? Man, have you ever felt, have you ever had an idea or a concept that does not leave your soul? Like it's just yep. so in you that it's like, man, I don't know what I can do with this. My original idea, I took it to my company, you know, and they said no. <laughs> it was kind of like that thing where um and it's funny because when I first started my company I only worked with startups at first I pivoted my own brand and so black economics which is the sweatshirt I'm wearing right now that was one of the first brands I ever worked with I was doing it on the side I was just doing it like oh, okay homie I'm gonna help you launch your brand like I'm gonna help you with you know use these strategies that I love so it was kind of the it, it was a passion project more than anything um and you know, it was like a hobby, <laughs> a side hustle. Got you. So do you think if your company said yes, they will have let you do what you wanted to do with your idea that you will still be working for that company? Absolutely. I think also um, I did get promoted in that company, but I also felt, um, and I love them, right? Like they actually employ uh, several members of my family now, but I, I would have stayed. Yeah. I, and I have nothing against like a corporate job and corporate environments. I, I'm in them all the time today. Right. So I, yeah, I would have stayed. I think that that's, and that's actually an interesting point because I feel like there's something to be said for nurturing the entrepreneur. Um, but I'm really glad that I left because my vision became bigger and bigger and bigger. And man, like the echo that I have, today is beyond that little idea. You get what I'm saying? It's way beyond what I ever imagined. I'm just experimenting, growing, figuring it out. And, you know, it used to just be me. And now we have a team of eight. 
Got you. So let's talk about that. Uh, I want to get back to this other stuff too. As you see in the chat, uh, if you don't see, I have a whole bunch of questions. We're not going to get through them all today, but this yeah. is me brainstorming as we're talking. Um, yeah. So uh, talk about your big vision then. So what yeah. is your big vision for ADCO? So it's a problem statement that I hear. So I'm in the technology industry and I, you know, I'm the type, like I'm gonna go to the panels and like, you know, uh, I think Twitter, Blackbirds, LinkedIn, like these companies have host the community, the, you know, African-American technology community. And I, I'm, I'm constantly hearing like, we have a pipeline problem. <laughs> um, you know, we're trying to hire more people of color, but we just, we can't find them. And so just something in me was like, there's just a different way. So we're in professional services, which we are a, a, you know, a consulting firm, an agency, a professional services company. Essentially, you sell your services to a company and then your people go and deliver those services. If you go to echoinc.com, my people look like the pipeline that these technology companies saying that they can't find. And I'm wondering like, okay, what's up with that, right? And so my thought process is, a lot of times, and it, it happens to me, not and it's something I don't like, but professional services are a big part of the pipeline to get into companies because companies oftentimes hire from professional services organizations. So part of my motivation is the model, the actual engagement model of how we hire and grow our people within ADCO and how, how do we hire people all different sizes, colors, shapes, sizes, and position them in these companies where eventually we're creating this pipeline for them to become employed in corporate organizations where probably a corporation wouldn't have employed them otherwise if they hadn't seen the product of the pudding, right? Because we also are very well known for our delivery, like we get it done. Um, so that's part of like my motivation and my vision. I think the second part is, is that truth be told, like I want to grow this thing and I want it to be acquired, right? Just, it's just the truth of, we have built a product, we're building, you know, several other kind of things on the digital side. And I think that we will build a model that another company wants to have eventually. And um, I just, you know, I, I'm going after the exit because I think there's something to be said about wealth and how you acquire it. And like, why are we in business in the first place? I asked my father one time, I said, okay, and I had started Echo, but I didn't tell him because, you know, business owners give other business owners advice and sometimes you're like, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like especially five you know parents like it's a different kind of thing so I waited till I grew Adco before I even told my family about it but I asked him I was like so what like if you could do something his company was called Advantage I was like if you could do something different with Advantage what would you do what would you do differently he was like I would have an exit strategy he was like I didn't have an exit strategy. And I guess apparently people had approached him about acquiring his company and he did not sell it. And then eventually he became disrupted. And so that was one thing that I was like, okay, cool. That's a vision as well. Um, and I think the other thing is to just have fun. Like I'm fairly young. I get to grow within my own organization professionally. And then I get to grow others. It's just really, it's a really good dynamic. And we get to incubate in a community that is specific that specific to that that's kind of defined by by me and my team got you so you actually mentioned that you didn't tell your parents or tell your father that you got into entrepreneurship so uh why didn't they, oh well, you told me why you didn't tell them but what did they think about when you eventually told them that you were doing this new venture they were so supportive actually they're very very supportive and <sighs> So one advantage that I have, because I think sometimes people tell their story as a like a motivation and they don't tell the like they don't tell the have you ever uh, read the book Outliers? Like they don't tell uh -huh. that Malcolm Gladwell. That, yep. Yeah, Malcolm Gladwell. They don't tell about that piece that like helps them succeed or that, you know, like, you know, they just tell the glossy part like, oh, I'm a black girl from Chicago. I'm a um, no. My parents are very, very supportive of my journey. Somebody's team member is phone is ringing. Hold on one second. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. But yeah, so my parents are super supportive of my journey. Like they, they're in it with me. They care about my self care. They get on me about that. Like I have a community around me. Like I'm telling you, and I mean, um, you and I are part of a, a mutual community as well, but like, I really do have a lot, a lot of support. And I think that that's 
important. And I know that there are entrepreneurs out there who don't have that level of support from their parents because they, or their family or whatever, because it's like, you got to get that good job. Well, because that's not the mentality, like I never had to deal with that. Um, but I also, like I came at it like a pitch competition, like this is ACO, this is the growth plan, this is what we got, this is where we going. So I, I very much presented it as an opportunity when I kind of came out the closet with my business. Like I was like- <laughs> Came out the closet, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now that, that's interesting because, uh, you know, I, I think, I'm glad that you mentioned that too in regards to people leaving out key parts of their story uh, because they think it like diminishes the story for them. And, you know, that thing for me, um, and I talk about it often, was, uh, you know, getting a scholarship to study at Phillips Academy in Andover, Massachusetts for three summers, which is, you know, the most prestigious boarding school in, in the country. Yeah. And, you know, me going through that program, so shout out to MS Squared Math and Science for Minority Students program. Uh, mm -hmm. But me, yeah, me having that experience really opened my eyes up to just different things that were out here in the world that I did not know existed as being yes. a child in, in no, Louisville, I Kentucky. Think that's critical. I think another key piece is I don't have student loans. So amen when, to that. You know what I'm saying? Amen. But when I, I saved my money, I literally lived like I was in a consultant at one of the top companies and people to this day will like make fun of me because I used to live like in Atlanta at Pepe's house. I had five roommates. I had five roommates for like four or five years making damn near six figures. I saved a lot of money before I quit my job. And it, so it was like, I saved my money. I built my strategies. I was, I had clients like, so it, a lot of people were like, yeah, I'm gonna take that leap of faith. Like, no, I took a leap of like, it was a measured risk. I knew exactly like how much money I wanted to save, how much money I wanted to make when I left. Like it was a lot of math behind it. And like business is a numbers game. Your business will tell you if you're in business. Right. And, you know, I want to talk about that actually in terms of your college education here and what physics and being a physics major did for you and yeah. good and bad and how it is applied to what you're currently doing with uh, ATCO. But we're going to do that after the break. Um, for the people who just may be tuning in, I'm here with uh, Shana Atkins. Shana is the founder and digital transformation coach at ATCO. ATCO is a company that helps corporations act like startups by using agile, agile and design thinking. And uh, today we're talking all about uh, how Shana used corporate strategies to quit her job and grow her startup. So if you guys like today's video and the content that uh, Shana and the knowledge that Shana's dropping today, please go ahead and show us some love by pressing the thumbs up button. Uh, the more love that you show us, the more love that YouTube's algorithm shows us, and more and more people will be able to see this video. Uh, as a matter of fact, on the count of three, if everyone can press the thumbs up button at the same time, we would really appreciate it. One, two, three. Go ahead and press the thumbs up button. Uh, we definitely appreciate you uh, for doing so. And make sure that you share and subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. Let's talk about physics and hardcore STEM and technology. Mm-hmm. Okay. And, uh, you know, you did that at Spelman or I think, uh, did you say yeah. you with Spelman in the interview? I know I, I read your LinkedIn profile too. I couldn't remember if you said it in the interview or not, yes, but um, yeah, yeah. You see, Spelman graduate. Yeah. You see with the Spelman, you studied, you know, physics caused you to have a mental breakdown or something did, but you were <laughs> studying physics at that particular time and just doing all these different things. Talk about that experience more. And then also I want to eventually relate this back to, mental health and entrepreneurship in terms of what you went through your senior year of college? Yeah, so, woo, um, I took an AP physics course my senior year in high school, and um, after I got out that course, survived it, I was like, ooh, I just never want to see physics again, right? <laughs> like, it was, it was rough, um, just mainly because the curriculum in AP physics or a some AP courses is very compressed, and so, um, I went to the Dean's office at Spelman and I really like am very thankful to Spelman because I'm not sure I would have been able to graduate as a physicist um, at another institution. Now, mind you, I took physics classes at Georgia Tech. I studied abroad. I took physics classes at one of the top universities in the UK, Lancaster University. So it wasn't the curriculum, it's the support. Um, but I was 
an international studies major when I went to um, Spelman because I like like Chinese and I was studying Chinese. So I just wanted to do that. And the dean of students said, hey, why don't you take a physics course? Didn't you take physics in high school? And I just feel like some of those critical questions that I got at Spelman, the caring questions, like I don't see everybody get. But I took a physics course. And at the end of my first semester taking that physics course, the professor approached me and asked me, did I want to major in the program? Now, mind you, it's only about four of us that graduate per year. So sometimes it's by personal recruitment. <laughs> so um, study physics, got really into it. Um, and I think around my junior, senior year, I, I actually had a really rough time at Spelman from the start, right? Cause I'm the, I am like the ultimate Issa Rae awkward black girl. But like the college version of that was like, you know what I'm saying? Like I had been in white schools, so I'm, I'm the only girl. Then I go to this all black, only girl school in Atlanta. Like it was just a shock. And, and so um, it's funny because how can you be culture shocked by being um, in your own culture all the time? Don't know. But um, at some point I was like, I want to fit in. And, and I actually think that was the issue. I was trying to, so I like ran for Miss Spellman. Like I was trying to be social, you know, I started dating all kind of crazy people. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like trying to date out and do stuff and be, at my first two, three years at Spellman, I was like in the books, like it wasn't, I wasn't about that life because I was trying to pass my class. So when I tried to fit in, it caused, it just wasn't, it just didn't work. Like, I got a C plus in my C plus plus class. <laughs> like I didn't do well in all my other classes. Plus I actually had these ideas about my thesis. I was writing a thesis, I, you know, I had to write a thesis for my honors program, something like that. And I had these ideas around like brownie in motion and I was trying to come with my topics and all this other stuff, but I'm trying to be fly every day at the same time and live this HBCU life that I never really could successfully do before. <laughs> And, you know, had a breakup and all kind of stuff happened at one time. Plus, I think it was obvious to me, like, oh, you didn't know what it meant to get a job. Like, nobody told me about an internship. I never had had an internship. Like, I was like, what am I going to do after graduation? I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't want to be a physicist I, um, because they don't get paid enough in grad school. I was like, I'm tired of being broke. Like, what am I going to do? And it just all, the stress just compiled. The whole brownie emotion plus boyfriends plus getting cute plus whatever. It was just like, I was trying to do everything all at once and snap. I just snapped. And it, it's just, it's just the truth, right? So um, ended up in a mental hospital for 10 days, had to drop out of school. And from there, I had to rebuild. And mm. when I had to rebuild, it was like, the only thing that's important to me is getting up out the hood because I had just came, I just went back to the hood because I dropped out of school. And it was literally like, people were like, so what you gonna do, work at McDonald's? Or you can you take classes at the local community college? And I was like, I got too many credits to take classes at the local community college. Like, How many was, credits did you have to graduate? Um, I was missing 20 credits. Like mm. I've dropped off my second, I was missing one semester, right? So um, yeah, so I had too many. <laughs> Right. You 20 credits away from a degree. And what you going to do with that on the West side? Like nothing, absolutely nothing. So somehow, some way I started going to the library every day and doing yoga. And then finally I like opened up my email account and I start emailing my professors because that's the type of school Spelman is like, you could be a student, not a student, <laughs> whatever. Like you could, I email my professors. I was like, I'm out, I've dropped out. I don't know what I'm gonna do. What you got any ideas? And one of my professors responded and was like, there's a summer program at UNC Chapel Hill. You could study biophysics. They pay you, you could take a class, blah, blah, blah. So I ended up actually able to use my get a refund check in the summer, go to school and get, I got a grad school credit and I took another sociology class and I did that so that when I went back to school, I would, I could take less credits because I wasn't really sure mentally how much of a workload I could take on. And I knew I had to take two other really hard physics classes. So I ended up going to summer school, appealing for my scholarship. Like that was a whole process. And then going back to Spelman and on scholarship, you're supposed to get into the dorm. If you don't get that process in a time, Spelman don't have very many residences, you miss that window. So then I had to yep. 
I was living on Lowry Street, right across from the library, which the trap house was like two doors down. <laughs> and walking to Spelman every day, like in the physics lab till midnight, like work, like, but that's all I cared about was like, I'm getting this degree. And I became a deep, like, I, I actually really started to enjoy it because I didn't care what anybody thought. And I was just like, I'm in it. And so I was experimenting a lot because I'm writing my thesis. You know, I wrote my thesis, I ended up writing it on astronomy. So I'm on the rooftop of the, um, you know, of the science center doing star, like, contacting other labs across the country and then i was like oh like this is what it takes to really come to a conclusion you know it takes a lot of experimentation it takes a lot of repetition a lot of iterations like to actually come to a defined thesis statement like a, a true like what do i feel about this subject it took a lot of effort and so um yeah that's i don't know yeah that's it like yeah. Deep experimentation. Yeah, that's interesting. I want to get to the experimentation thing a little bit later. Um, but, you know, what really stood out to me with what you just talked about is this concept of being distinct instead of fitting in, right? Yeah. I and had then, to let go of that fitting in part. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then also the mental health, uh, you know, longer term. So what I want to know, I guess, is once you release yourself from what other people thought and you could be your distinct you, how has that helped you with your current company um, and what you're building now? So what I will say is that that's a constant, that's a constant battle, right? Because then I went from there to corporate. So it was like, I, I tried for like three months to straighten my hair at corporate. I've always been natural <laughs> um, and that didn't work. So it was just like always, <laughs> it was a, um, a, a situation where it's like, I didn't have another, another choice. When you go through something in terms of mental health that really sets you back, you really do have to like eat well, get your life together, figure out your balance. So I have like very distinct and clear boundaries in my journey because it just is what it is. And because of that, if I if I go up against those boundaries, that's a clear indicator that that's just not how I can live. So I think that I live my authentic self mainly because I have no choice. Um, and every time I try something different, I run into a wall. It, but I'll tell you, like I just stopped code switching probably a year or two ago, right? Like I'm I sorry, mean, stop what? Code switching. Oh, code switching. Okay. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. So I like I'm I'm in a corporate environment. I'm like, hey Katie, how you doing? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like that all that had to, but what I realized is that at every level of mental growth, you have no energy or time for, for inauthenticity. Right. And so as it as my career grew and then and money my, growth too. Yeah, money growth, <laughs> right. As my career grew and then as my uh business grew, right. Like you said, money growth. It's you, I'm a lead a team of eight, talk to corporate clients all the time, try to sell my services, and then do what? Like, try to cold switch in the middle of it or try to um, be, wear mute colors or try to figure out how to straighten my hair every, no, no. <laughs> doesn't work. It just doesn't work. Um, right. Yeah, you know, actually in the next segment, I want to talk a little bit more about you know, doing business to business type of deals, you know, getting into this space a little bit more and go deeper into agile, agile thinking as well. Um, but before I do, uh, for the people just tuning in, I'm here with Shana Atkins. Uh, Shana is the, uh, excuse me, founder and digital transformation coach at ATCO. Uh, they are a company that helps corporations act like startups by using agile and design thinking. And today we're talking about Shana's background um, and her career progression to this point, and also uh, how she used corporate strategies to quit her job and grow her startup. Uh, so please go ahead and uh, if you guys like this content, please go ahead and press the thumbs up button, show us some love. Uh, we really appreciate you um, as well for doing so. Shana, let's talk a little bit more about Agile and what is Agile? You talked about it a little bit in the beginning. Um, I want to talk about that. I want to talk about, you know, getting corporate clients and transitioning from, you know, being a corporate employee to actually being into, into the business to business space. Yeah. So, yeah. So I guess my first question for people who don't really know, can you redefine agile? I know you did it, did it at the beginning of the interview, but can you talk about it one, once again? 
Yeah, so Agile is um, an approach to building, it started off as approach to building products and software. So it's the how um, of how startups think like Google, Amazon, Facebook, build their platforms. Um, and essentially, very simple, it's an iterative approach to building. Um, and it's, it's incremental. So that's, that at the, the most basic level is what it is. And it's rooted in a concept that you don't have to be perfect to release. And you could release just a little bit of but at a time and you can actually achieve value along the way in the journey. Got you. So how is that different than the ways that corporations have historically thought? So most corporations, they set a budget, they, um, they set a goal, they want to do a particular project or they want to achieve a specific goal. And then they give it a budget, they give it some resources and they say, okay, they, you know, it's some business hands it off to a technology department and they say, hey, like, when are you going to get this to me? And then nine months later, actually was my very first like project in my uh, consulting firm I used to work at. Six, seven months later, it's coded. We go back to the client and we say, hey, here it is. And they're like, that's nothing of like what I expected, right? And then, the, and then we say, oh, well, it's going to be delayed by two weeks or, oh, it's going to be delayed by a month. And there's no predictability. There's no, you know, now the marketing department's impacted. Testing is impacted. It's just got a lot of downstream effects. And then I was exposed to Agile where essentially we were releasing the product as it was being built like every week, every two weeks. And we were actually making money Money on the product while we were building it and I was like what like it just changed my life I was just like this is it because there was also always a period every two weeks or whatever cadence that company ran on in which you can make a decision around what direction you wanted to go in based on the results of the previous increment of time that you have spent so that concept I just was like, I need this in my life. Like I need to be able to move forward, take tiny steps, go towards a goal and then change my mind along the way. And like, let the data tell me what direction I should go in. So I, I stopped doing vision boards. Like I stopped all of that big picture stuff. Now I do it a little bit more. Um, cause now I realize that Echo grew so fast that I was like, whoa, like, where are we going? Like, <laughs> you got to know where you're going. Um, but I do really believe in incremental growth and um, kind of how 1% uh, 1% improvements can really take you exponentially into where you want to go. So interesting. So the idea that you pitched to the company that you were working for, uh, was it agile based or were you thinking about agile thinking at that time or no? Yeah, so I basically what happened was they were doing it, but they just weren't doing it at the client that I was at. And so when I pitched it to them, a whole bunch of um, uh, MDs, managing directors, uh, executives, like kind of flew in, literally, they all flew in from different places. And like, I'm sitting at a meeting with my client, which the client who was a woman and just very supportive was like, cool girl, pitch this, like, let's do it. And then I'm surrounded by you know, my partners who were more senior than me at the time. And she was like, where do these people come from? Right. So it just, it's not that they didn't necessarily like let me, they just took it over. And I was like, okay. And then I had to do all the work. And I was like, okay, that don't sound right. But when I initially started at Code, there was a huge component of it that had to do with women and how do you use this kind of incremental approach to build community with women in business and women in tech and that's the idea that they shut down and so um that is what i actually ended up starting with for for my business is that i launched a women's community in chicago and so that women's community is what like propel things um and actually continues to propel things uh, i actually shut it down but that those set of contacts were how i, were a I was able to really get into the bdb space yeah, that's my, that was my very next question is, how did this transition or what were the steps that you took from leaving your corporate job to starting to get corporate clients? And then yeah. also, what were your biggest challenges when you were, when you were starting out? Yeah, so um, I would say that 
my biggest challenges are actually occurring more now than when I started out. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. Well, I was, then what, what were your challenges starting out? And then yeah, I guess so, talk about your challenges now too then. Yeah, so um, my biggest challenges starting out were matching, like meeting client needs, right? Because uh, I was going after corporate clients and how I went after corporate clients is actually very simple. There's this thing called LinkedIn.com and I would reach out, I would make a list of who I wanted to connect with and I had this thing called Day of Bold, which means every day I reached out to somebody who I thought would never respond. And some of them responded and I just had the conversations I needed to have. I communicated my vision. I pitched in startup competitions with no platform. I pitched a professional services organization like it was the latest, hottest technology. Um, (laughs) And I met people through that. And so then those people, some of them became customers, some of them became supporters, some of them threw me work, like some of them pulled, you know, connected me with other partner organizations. So my biggest challenge in the beginning was that I had started to get a little bit of traction, but I didn't have any employees. And so I was trying to do everything myself. And so finally, it was like light bulb moment. Um, I need employees. So that is, that was the big, like, first transition. And now my biggest challenge now is, man, the company grew faster than what I had expected. We grew 5X last year. And um, all I used to have, like, really strict habits around Agile and, like, all this stuff because I implemented all this stuff in my life. And then when your company growing 5X, I think it's 12 months in a year, 5X, that's, I mean, we're growing, like, 100%, like, every, you know, and I'm, I'm telling you, I... I just, the challenge was like, I gained 40 pounds. Like I'm, I was flying all over the United States trying to fulfill engagements. Um, I was very sleepy and I did not pay enough attention to my employees. Like that's where I really messed up. Like I, I was all about, I got to do this for this client. I got to do that for that client that my team that I built I wasn't pouring back into them. And so I had to learn, like I really had to learn to be a better leader. And I'm still on that journey, probably about 20 minutes ago, like trying to really get there. Now that's interesting. Um, And what I find interesting is this concept of team building, especially when you're dealing with, I assume if you're doing agile, you're working with really smart people. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, in terms of, you know, yeah, very smart people who have, (laughs) <laughs> yeah you know advanced degrees and you know yeah. who, older who, have, who older that type of thing as well and I, yeah. I assume you're, you're in your early 30s is that right yeah I am 30 yeah okay so you're 30 um talk about that then in regards to that interaction with your employees you know what that looks like and then how do you go about getting the most out of your team while still keeping them sane well, so we run Agile <laughs> ourselves. Um, so we have a lot of like process around how we pull work, how we identify work, how we prioritize work, how we incrementally build towards something. Um, so that's one thing that like I came in with the system, which is uh, which is very useful. But then there's a second component of like, I don't know, it's like I kind of pour love on them a little bit. So I wanted when we're, we're a startup or we're a small business. So that means I have recently started recruiting from some of the largest firms in the world, right? That means I'm convincing people to leave, um, (laughs) you know, big 401ks and this and that to come be at ACO and grow ACO, right? So I have to really be like, okay, so how many kids you got? You got a dog, what's your, you know, what you like, what kind of workouts, what's your boundaries, what do you like, you know, what's the culture you want and what's your motivation and this and that. So I invest a lot of front in getting to know the people that come in. And then we have a very strict interview process. It's three rounds. We do cases. We do a day in the life. You have to actually create a work product for Edco. We got to get to know you a little bit better. So there's a, a pretty strict process for how we court. And then everybody comes in as a contractor. So you pretty much work with Echo for a while before you even like become a real, like an actual employee. So it's just a lot of like investment in the person um, that we have to do with our employees. And I think the other thing is I have to listen a lot. 
because there's a lot I do not know. So I have to really listen to my customers and to my employees. And one thing that I use as a magic weapon is that I built good relationship with my customers. So I ask them about what I should do for my employees. I ask my employees about what I should do for my clients. My client, Afro, last year's Afrotech and my client helped me recruit um, my current like senior product manager. Mm. My client, my client was like, at, you know, what does this person really want? What kind of transformation is she looking for? Does she want to be, you know, lead thought capital? Does she want this? Those questions help me to ask, you know, to have a real conversation in that recruiting. And then Charlemagne, the guy and Afrotech was like, are y'all going to help like build these big corporations for the rest of y'all life? Or are y'all going to help start building these small businesses and I was in the audience and she was in the audience. We were not together, but we had a conversation about that afterwards. And I thank Charlemagne because he really helped, you know, he helped frame what we're trying to do. And like, sometimes it takes a voice outside of yourself to advocate for you. They don't even know they're advocating for you. So I really do kind of thank him for kind of being that voice um, at that moment. Cause she, she did make that transition. And um, shout out to she, shout she out. Told us over CNN and First Data, right? So shout out. <laughs> yeah, so shout out to your senior product manager. Uh, <laughs> shout out to Charlemagne. Uh, he's a you know, friend of uh, Voice Walkers Enterprises in the Black Business School. Um, shout out to the whole Workers Club crew. Hopefully you guys have us back on uh, sooner or later. <laughs> that, but uh, no, that's interesting. So your value prop to future employees then. So uh, she turned down first data and what was the other company you said? CNN. CNN. Yeah. So CNN. Uh, why, why Atco over those other, uh, places? You have to ask her. You had to bring her on the interview her. No, um, I, really <laughs> would say, I think it's because we created the job that made the most sense for her. Like, first of all, it just made, it just made sense. We were a fit based on her skill set. So it's one, it, it was a fit. It was a culture fit. Um, we actually had her, participate in our annual planning meeting last year so she flew in and she spent time with the team um and then i think this the second piece was that um she knew that i would listen to her like when she draws her boundaries i listen when she i'm, I'm not now i'm gonna say what i have to say and that when it's i said what i said that's different right but it's when we live it's a conversation she gets to be a part of a dialogue and then agile is about transparency it's about communication it's about trust those are some of the values of those concepts in general um and so we try to live and breathe that got you yeah so um no that makes a lot of sense um you know i, I guess my last question in this segment before we wrap up is about being in the consulting space and the professional services space versus having complete ownership of a particular type of product, right? So you have companies out there, let's say like McKinsey and Company, Bain, BCG, yeah. IDEO, Idea Couture, all these, sorry for my daughter in the background, she really wants her daddy right now. <laughs> we'll let, you know, we'll answer this and let you get on. <laughs> no, 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 she'll be fine. Uh, so, yeah, so all of these different companies and you see them in the politics and the news because, you know, Pete Buttigieg or however you say his name is worked at McKinsey. Then you have all these other people who worked at these large consulting firms and who have been consultants before they either gone into politics or run these large businesses. So have you thought about that in terms of your own career trajectory and career path in terms of I know you want to be acquired, you know, as a consulting consultancy agency? But the next step in terms of like starting your own product, like has that ever crossed your mind? Yeah, definitely. So um, we actually have online courses that we've launched and um, specifically we have a course series that's focused on like small businesses and startups. And for me personally, like black owned businesses, I would like for them to um kind of content for them because I that's where my passion space lies because I'm a product of black business um so one 
I want to spread the word about some of the latest corporate strategies into our community. And I actually um, specifically created a free online course for this community and it's available at go.designforbillions.com. And um, so yeah, we're building out kind of IP and um, online courses that we want to be digestible and to spread to the greater world, no matter who you are. So that's, that's one kind of piece from a product standpoint. And then I think the second piece is that um, we will listen to our customers and we'll build based on what they need and what their problems are, which I think is ultimately how we want to operate. Um, truth be told, Lawrence, like I'll go against the best of them every day. McKenzie, EY, like the, the big fours. Um, I have turned down offers from the, what, three out of those big fours since I've been at Echo. Um, so I've gone through some, you know, in the early days, you got to know what you, <laughs> you got to know your options. So I've, I've actually interviewed, gotten a job, been told by mentors that I should enter those companies and that it's a mistake for me to grow at Co versus be a part of those organizations. And I'm a big supporter of those organizations. I'm still in communication with those organizations. I pass on diverse resumes to those organizations all the time. Um, but I'm, I'm kind of set in my vision and my purpose and, and I'm set on solving problems for my customers. So right now our digital learning products are the, is the product space that we operate in. And then in the journey of solving problems, we will extend our service offerings based on, on what the need is. And, and one thing I know for sure is that we build products so we can build what to, to what we see the opportunity. Got you. Yeah, no, I think that's awesome. And, uh, you know, for the people just tuning in, I'm here with uh, Shana Atkins. Uh, Shana is the founder and digital transformation coach at Atco. They are a company that helps corporations act like startups by using agile and design thinking. And today we talked all about uh, how Shana uses uh, and use corporate strategies to quit her job and grow her startup. If you guys like this video, please go ahead and press the thumbs up button. Show us some love. We really appreciate you for doing so. Please make sure that you share and subscribe. So Shana, we're in the last little segment. Um, and I guess my first question is, you know, how can people get in touch with you if they want to you know, purchase your courses and you know, um, just you know, connect with you more? How can they do so? Yeah, so you can find me on Instagram um, at Shana Atkins on Facebook, the same. You can also find, um, you know, Atco Inc. on, and that's A-T-K-C-O-I-N-C on LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter. Um, and then, of course, if you want to enroll in one of our courses, it's go.designforbillions.com. The concept is, is that if a billion dollar corporation uses these strategies to scale, um, so can you. So go designforbillions.com and we look forward to um, each and every one of you being a part of our community all right and that's the number four so i'm going to put this of course in the description but it's go.design the number four billions.com um, and you know get access to you know her free course on uh, that particular front um, as well and also i mean we have a lot of you know corporate and professional people in our audience as well um, yeah. Is there anyone that you specifically look for in terms of like your ideal client to work with you? Uh, yes. with, uh, um, yeah. So we are in heavy in the financial services, um, oil and gas and energy space. And we actually are looking to help some um, CBD companies in their seat to shelf process identification and building technology products around that. Um, so that's kind of the high growth startup opportunity. We've got, we've got one product in healthcare. We've got one product um, in HR. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's our dream clients. And yeah, we, we look to, we look forward to doing business and we're also like, we hiring Lawrence. So if you are a scrum professional or you have design skills, user experience skills, you are consulting and you are tired of not being heard or your promotion path doesn't seem fair, um, come on over. It's echoinc.com um, or info at echoinc.com. So send your resume, honey. Wonderful. So my last question is a little bit personal. Um, I want to go back to the beginning in regards to both your parents being entrepreneurs and being disrupted out and what that, how that affected your life and your, your career trajectory. Uh, what I want to know is knowing what you know now, you know, in terms of Scrum and Agile, 
what would you have done differently for your parents? And what would you have told them to do um, as they were going through this disruption back, you know, 20, 20 years ago, however long it was ago? Okay, so just a quick story. Uh, my dad, uh, about three, four years ago, was driving Uber. And um, we went through a scrum and agile process. And he now works as an executive at Accenture. Um, and he and I, he used to work at ADCO. He helped me with business development. Now he, he currently works at Accenture. So um, it's funny because you asked me what would I have done. I, I went and did that specifically. <laughs> Um, and cause it was about, you know, how did we find kind of align him to what his passion would be? And then how do we kind of re-enter him back into the workforce? He had a lot of passion projects and other stuff that he was doing, but I think he's very, very happy now. Um, and then, um, as far as like my mom and what I would do differently, I think that I would have paid attention to emerging technology trends a little more. So it's funny because my mom was very forward thinking in that like I was coding on DOS in the 90s because um, you have to in order to activate um, electronic systems, you have, you know, that was what it would what it took. But we didn't really look at the market trends like we didn't trace that. OK, we're dependent upon as a reseller of a large corporation, we're dependent upon their selling strategies to be in business. And so when they shifted their strategies, it disrupted the business model, her business model. So I would say that what I would do differently for them is I would look at kind of the cycle of business um, and I would try to identify and experiment with where things are going. Um, and right now, like say for instance, if my parents had a company in this moment, I would, really be paying attention to emerging technologies, to data, to artificial intelligence, to machine learning. And I would go real basic. So I would, you know, one, buy the course so that you can kind of understand the concept of incremental um, approaches. But I would literally do one little concept at a time. All right, cool. I have a cleaning business. What can I do to automate this process? What can I do to collect this data point? What is What value does it bring to me? Um, and then I would also coaches and consultants, like having professional um, consultants and coaches to help you grow your business, I think it's a big value. Wonderful. My very last question to you is, what is your best piece of advice for individuals who want to quit their jobs like you did, you know, start a business either in the B2B space or B2C space? Like, what would you tell that person? Start now. Um, like operate as if you're fully in business and that you're fully scaled today while you're in your company, you would be surprised by how much traction you will make. Um, I actually had this conversation with Fabian Elliott of Black Tech Mecca out of Chicago. Shout out to Fabian. That's the whole yeah, thing. and we had this conversation. So he like took a leave of absence from Google and he was like, man, like even when I was at Google, I was doing the same amount of work. Like you would be surprised how much you can get done as a side hustler. And when you quit, like how much you not getting done in comparison to <laughs> you can get the same amount of work done so do it while you're there while you got the check while you got the 401k while you got the benefits while you got the security while you have the network because a lot of people when i was building out at co it was a lot of my co-workers who helped me strategize in the beginning um you know in a conference room during lunch whatever like use that that training that corporate training you got access to take those classes develop yourself okay lawrence i'm getting out of hand we hey, talk. that's more than your single best piece of advice, but we love it. We love it anyway. Yeah, so it no, come from start me. now. The advice came from Fabian. It didn't come from uh, me. But, <laughs> you know what? I'm going to get Fabian on here, actually. So I yeah, to you should. Stuff. You Some should. He really, yeah, he really did help me out. Him and Emil Cambry said, capture everything, take pictures from uh, Blue 1647. So those okay. pieces of advice really helped me accelerate as a side hustler. Wonderful. Shana, thank you so much for your time today. Uh, we really appreciate it. Um, we also like to thank you guys for watching uh, today's interview with uh, Shana Atkins, who is the founder and digital, tr digital transformation coach at Atco. They are a company that helps corporations act like startups by using agile and design thinking. And today's topic was uh, how Shana used corporate strategies to quit her job and grow her startup. If you guys like today's video, please go ahead and press the thumbs up button. Uh, please show us some love. We really appreciate you. Um, I would also like to thank our corporate sponsor, uh, which is the Black Business School. And at the Black Business School, we don't just help you climb the corporate ladder. We help you build your own as well. So yeah. what we do is help African-Americans. Uh, uh, we help African-Americans 
um, obtain a culturally relevant um, and profitable and uh, just all around education as it relates to business. Uh, we focus on uh, people who want three needs in their life. They either want to leave a legacy behind uh, to their families. Uh, they want to have additional freedom in their life to spend time with their family or travel, um, or they want additional stability and security going into their golden years. Uh, so we help with all three of those challenges. Uh, people who come to us, uh, you know, we always tell them to focus on one of three things in terms of wealth building strategies. That's either entrepreneurship, which we've been talking about today, uh, real estate investing or stock market investing as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so please ma make sure you head over to theblackbusinessschool.com. That is theblackbusinessschool.com to learn more. Also, please check out uh, Shana's course, uh, which is uh, at go.designforbillions.com. That's design for uh, the number four billions.com. Uh, make sure you check that out. Uh, the link will also be in the, the description as well. So on behalf of Shana Atkins, my name is Lawrence Watkins. I am the founder and CEO of Great Black Speakers Bureau. I'm also the president and chief operating officer of the Black Business School. Take care, be blessed, and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.